Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, I'm just settling in and we'll wait for a few people to get on. I didn't have, I rushed here to get on my live and did not have uh, time to get it set earlier. So probably a lot of people will be getting the notification in 10 minutes or so. Wow, I think my glasses are dirty. <laughs> I want to be able to see who's writing. Jackie Cunningham, I see, is here. Thank you, Jackie, for tuning in right away. Boy, it has been a crazy week. I'm sure everyone can agree with that assessment. Connie is here. I want Connie to give everyone an update on the late bloomer plants in California that stayed in California. The apple tree, comfrey, uh, uh, let's see, the African blue basil. Uh, I can't remember what all you got now. Uh, you, can, you can tell everybody how the plants are doing. I hope they're doing well. My plants are doing well. Christy, Christy Betts, good morning. Trudy, Daryl, Beatrice, Rose, good morning, everyone. Thank you. Nine of you so far. I uh, was just saying that I got on last. I just got this. I just sat down five minutes ago and just set this. But um, I made great time from, uh, had a bad night, got to say, had a bad night. Uh, I worked late, finally got the mess, the boxes and all of the, you know, when you have a bathroom, you think, well, you don't have that much stuff in a bathroom, but oh my gosh, especially women. I mean, you, you got hair stuff, you got face stuff, you got all this stuff. And I had boxes and boxes and I got through all of that and cleared the floor about, by about midnight last night. I was determined to finish. Well, I paid the price because at two in the morning, it, I felt like a knife was going into my uh, my left hip and had to get up and take pain medication. And I didn't really feel like getting up at six o'clock so I could be here early. But anyway, I am here. Yay. Amal is here from Saudi, Jamela from Trinidad and Tobago. And P, what does P stand for, Kirsch? in Mississippi. Maddie is here from Iceland. Wow, you guys are awesome. And I know that the world is in a crazy place. Um, and like I said, I was driving through Nashville and there, were, there was like no traffic. And I'm thinking, okay, I don't think all these people are in church because I don't think the churches are open. So people are staying home. Um, not me, I'm out. <laughs> Pauline, it's nice to meet you, Pauline. Where do you live? What state? What zone? Do you have a garden? Oh, gosh. Christy, it's just mind-boggling, all of the stuff that I need to unpack to put in my office. I haven't even started that. You know, because I have... I, I bought this expensive laptop that I could run Premiere Pro and Lightroom and um, Photoshop all at the same time if I need to. I mean, you really do need those three programs because I don't know if you guys know, but when you shoot something, if you're not shooting on a phone, if you're shooting on a camera, you got to put a card in. These new, uh, these new laptops don't even have a card reader. You have to buy a an attachment for the card to read the card. But I file, because I shoot so much, I file everything in Lightroom. Uh, these are all Adobe products that you pay a monthly fee for. Um, Premiere Pro is a separate fee and Lightroom and Photoshop together is a separate fee. So, uh, you know, I bought this laptop because I knew I was going to be doing all this traveling and there was no way. I mean, if I hadn't had this laptop, I wouldn't have been able to make all of the videos, pretty much all of the videos this whole year. <laughs> so uh, 
my computer is out of the box. My big computer is out of the box and sitting on my desk, but that's as far as it's gotten. It's not plugged in. I don't know where the backup drives are. You can't, you can't run the computer without the backup drives because that's where all the uh, files, the video files and photo files live. They don't live on your hard drive. So <laughs> it's a big setup. So uh, let's see. Pickwick Lake. Now I've heard of Pickwick Lake. It almost seems like I've been by there, but I, I don't know. Um, I'm glad you're doing good, Amal. Yes, I do have a post office box. It is 2358. That's 2358. This table shakes. 2358. Post office box 2358. Lebanon, L-E-B-A-N-O-N, -E like the country. Tennessee, and the zip code is 37088. And um, <laughs> I was supposed to be getting the deed to my house. Can you believe that? I've been there for six weeks and I don't, I still don't have the deed to my house. Mm. Some people ask me about my um, survey. And the real realtor told me where to go to get that. I don't actually have that yet. But she did send me a septic field map. So some people were asking, where's the septic field? You, you know, you don't necessarily want to put a garden or plant your fruit trees over your septic field. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, um, good morning, Denise. Uh, yes, Jamela, I'm just so glad you have good weather and that you can get out in your garden every day and you're not uh, cooped up since you are staying home. Good morning, Rebecca from Louisville, Kentucky at Food Forest Next Door. Okay, so uh, I have a new helper. Yeah, uh, much different, not a garden helper not a garden helper slash handyman. It's a handyman who uh, may be able to help me with garden beds, but that's not the first thing on the list. There's a few other things on the list. The, uh, I had also, he, he came yesterday. He's really nice. He's a former police officer and, um, he just loves to help people. And so I got a new mailbox. The mailbox that was out there was covered in, I don't know if it, it's mold or lichen or what, but it's just re, it was really, really gross and old. And there was an old newspaper. Remember when we used to have newspapers delivered and they had their own little slot, little mailbox right beside your main mailbox? I had the Nashville Banner. When I grew up, the Nashville Banner and the Nashville Tennessean were the two major newspapers in this uh, state. I don't even know if the Banner still exists. I really don't. I mean, newspapers have all, it's, well, it's all been swallowed up. Uh, all of media has been swallowed up. So there really aren't that many independent newspapers anymore that can afford to hire reporters and hire, hire photographers and all that to go out and get stories. So um, I took that thing out. It was covered with that gray spotted, it was just, it looks like it's coming up from the ground and just covering it all over. It was really gross. So that's gone. Um, <laughs> do they get a paper in it, Jack? Hi Kay, um, hi Paul from Australia. I'm not at my homestead. I am in Nashville uh, at my mother's facility, and I'm going to go down and visit with her uh, for a little bit. I, I did all this coordinated stuff for today. I, after today, I just want to stay home for <laughs> a few days. And um, so I, I stocked up on a couple more bags of groceries 
right on the way here. And I'm going to talk to you for guys for a little bit. And then I'm going to go visit with my mother. And then I am going to a friend, a late bloomer friend that I've never met. Or if I did meet it was so long ago, I don't remember. We've become very close through late bloomer and uh, going down there to um, do a little target practice. So um, that should be interesting. <laughs> she has a big farm, so uh, I, I won't embarrass myself. <laughs> oh, good. Yes, uh, uh, Daryl is mentioning sweet potatoes. This is a great time to get your sweet potato slips started. And what could be easier than cutting a hopefully organic, good quality sweet potato, cutting it in half, putting some toothpicks in it, putting the cut half in water, keeping it watered, keeping that half in water. And that takes about a minute or two, right? If your toothpicks are handy. And so you'd be amazed. You know, Daryl will have a bunch more sweet, but he grows a lot of sweet potatoes. And did you know, speaking of sweet potatoes, did you know that the sweet potato leaves are more nutritious than the root? Yeah. And sweet potatoes, the roots, are much more nutritious than regular potatoes. Um, so it's a great thing to grow sweet potatoes. They grow, it's a completely different plant. So you you don't plant a sweet potato to get, like you do, like you plant, if you're a beginner, I, obviously if you're not a beginner, you know this. But uh, if you're if you want to grow potatoes, you you grow a seed potato. You grow it, them from a seed potato, and one little potato can, if you do it well. And I have had better and worse luck growing potatoes in pots. Uh, I don't have. I've never had an opportunity to grow potatoes in the ground. I did have a raised bed where I grew potatoes, little black potatoes. They were, I mean purple. They were fantastic. Uh, so, but sweet potatoes, you literally have this thing and it just keeps producing. Remember if in my apartment window, I had them in my apartment window in my brief stay in <laughs> at Rose Alley. Uh, and you just clip off, you know, the re really biggest shoots that, that uh, grow out of that, the top of that tomato, a potato, and you um, can plant them. And then they, because they've got all these roots, and then they produce the sweet potatoes underneath that. So, oh, it's all just so wonderful. I got this comment. I didn't actually have time to read comments from my video yesterday because I had two people at my house. And I hope everybody can hear me. I'm trying not to talk too loud. Wow, that's interesting. Are you talking about regular potatoes, Rebecca? <gasps> Year round, that's great. How do you prepare them, Marvin? Marvin's talking about eating potato, sweet potato leaves year round in Florida. Mm. What do you mean you've, oh, you've had the same plants growing in the ground? Oh, right, 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 right. When there, there are different varieties of sweet potatoes. And when I was in California, I was given by this master gardener, he, he had this specific kind of sweet potato that his wife was um, Asian and they loved to eat the sweet potato leaves. And so he had a particular variety that those plants would just, if you remember, I used to grow them in, in those wooden boxes that finely rotted, completely rotted out from the bottom. Um, and I built those boxes or had them built by uh, out of the reclaimed fence I had around the front porch before I took that out and put that pretty redwood fence around the whole garden, the whole front yard garden. Anyway, I had those plants in there and I had them for years and you just clip the freshest, most beautiful leaves and you need a lot of them because you stir fry a potato, sweet potato leaf for like 30 seconds and it shrivels. <laughs> so you need a lot, but you, you don't cook them long. That's for sure. Steve is here. Good morning. 
Steve, all, you know, I have met so many Steves. It is unbelievable. The, the supervisor of the whole wood chip thing, by the way, they only came the two times. Never heard anything after that. So uh, not holding my breath on that. I actually was driving by a gas station and I saw all those crews. They were parked off to the side. They were having lunch break or sitting in the cab trying to stay warm. And I thought about going over and going, hey, you coming back? <laughs> you said you were going to bring me as much as I want. But that hasn't happened. But the 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 father and son team that made my beautiful swing and my Adirondack chairs, their name Steve also. And uh, oh, it seems like there's so many Steves. Beatrice, I should teach formally online. Course horse, course horse is an example. What do you mean, Beatrice? Teach through Zoom or or how? How do you monetize that? I know a lot of people do. I just don't know how to do it. Jennifer, good morning. Woo, what's four times 72? Jennifer's got, let's see, eight, four to 288 cells loaded up with seeds already. Yeah, you got spring fever, all right. It's only January 6th, 17th, 17th. I know, I know, but I got to have a better plan of action with the whole chipped thing before I have somebody come back because, you know, that was difficult. And, um, you know, if I have them dropped right beside the driveway, then I've got to hire somebody to come and move those with some kind of a uh, little... It's not a skid, uh, not a skid steer, something on wheels. I don't want to tear up my whole gar my whole yard. Uh, I know I, that's what I'm thinking, Connie. <laughs> Good morning, Nana. She said her son-in-law is called Stephen. I have a cousin named Stephen too. Ooh, well, Allison is asking about zone five. Is anybody here from zone five wondering about when to start tomato seedlings? I think it's way too soon. I think middle of February would be soon enough, maybe even too soon. I mean, you can't set anything out until they were telling me the other day, the guy at the farm co-op was telling me I shouldn't set anything out until Mother's Day. I'm going, when is Mother's Day? He said, first week of May. I'm going, first week of May? <laughs> I'm going to have to have a greenhouse. I'll go crazy before the first week of May if I don't, if I'm not growing something. Anyway, about the comments, I saw that someone wrote a comment yesterday. I just saw the beginning of it and she's, it was something about, I need to calm down, not get so excited about my new plants. And I thought, you know, I just want to share my excitement because uh, you know, we need like to be happy and excited and inspired right now. It's a lot going on. Uh, thank you. Christy's reminding everybody to hit the thumbs up. We've got 70 people on. Thank you so much for joining. If this is your first time joining my channel, I am still without internet on my new homestead in Tennessee. Uh, I lived in California for 32 years and did year-round gardening for the last eight years and uh, left it all behind and have a whole new life. Uh, I am a late bloomer and I am learning and I am making mistakes and my subscribers and my viewers are reminding me or telling me about my mistakes in a very nice way and I'm learning a lot. So I appreciate everyone who has come to my channel and is supporting it. So if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up, it really helps the analytics and I would appreciate that. Allison Murphy is here mid-April and did not get tomatoes until end of August. Uh, well, there, you know, that's the thing is like there are 
tomatoes, you, you may know what you want to grow and you, you may only have a certain ones that, that you're interested in growing. But I know even in California where you can start much earlier. I mean, I started my tomato seedlings. I started my tomato seeds by the middle of January in California. And uh, they went out. I mean, it didn't never froze where I was. So, but, you know, you just don't have the long sunny days. So I don't think. I would take them out during the day and bring them in at night. But I don't think I planted them in the ground until the beginning of April, something like that. Uh, lavender Cottage is here. Willow, she's planting willow trees today in 7A. Now, where are you, Lavender Cottage, again? And what is your name? Patty Hayden. Oh my God, everyone, say hi to Patty Hayden. Uh, she is my adopted sister, one of them. I have several. <laughs> Actually, no, Patty and I are sisters, and Jack and <laughs> Jack and I are sisters too. But anyway, where are you, Patty? Are you in Texas? Are you in Vegas? If you if you recall, Patty came down to my house, and she she and her daughter came down to my house and saw me in one of the last performances of the play that I was doing in Sierra Madre and then came and visited the garden and uh, we were we were together for a couple of days we had a great time and I was talking to you all the time and then and then I I lost track of you but that happens a lot I'm so I'm so glad you tuned in like like um, um, in Ashland uh, Angie I haven't heard from Angie in a long time. I hope she's okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Basta. I don't know how to pronounce that. Basta Genug. Um, that's my big news. I got my lights. Mm -hmm. I found a company online called Grow It LED because I am on a mission to find products that are at the very least assembled in this country. <laughs> I was looking at Lowe's, which almost everything at Lowe's is, is made in China. But um, I was looking at mailboxes and the mailbox, uh, I picked out one and it was made in India. And I thought, well, okay, that's, let me see. Let me just keep looking. And I found one that it said it was assembled in the U.S. So I thought, well, that's better than nothing. So I got that one. <laughs> uh, good morning, Edna is here. Jennifer, Jennifer's in Texas. Okay. Oh, wait, did Patty say she's, I'm going to start documenting you. Oh, you've got a homestead in Texas. That's fantastic. I can't wait to catch up with you. Why don't you tell everybody what, how much, uh, yeah, life happens. <laughs> Why don't you tell everybody how much space you have and everything? Oh my gosh, I went right through there, Patty. Remember? That drive through Dallas was the most nerve wracking of my entire <laughs> trip from LA to Tennessee. How cold is it in Canada, Lori? Oh, you have five acres. You must be over the moon, Patty. That's fantastic. Sager says, early bloomers do not get goals done, but late bloomers do, right? <laughs> anyway, I have some issues, you know, that I have to take care of on the homestead because this, this, um, it's all pre-existing. The house is house and pole barn or shop or whatever you want to call it. So the shop does not have gutters on it. And so I could just call a company tomorrow and say, I want gutters on that building. But I, I want to figure out if there's a way to catch that water and take it right across the driveway to that one section of garden or store it over there and have a hose, or I, I don't know exactly what the best thing is to do. I could, maybe Daryl, you, maybe you have an idea. Um, I remember when I was in the permaculture garden in 
South Carolina, they had an outbuilding that they built. It was an open air building for educational purposes, but from the roof, they were catching all the water and they had 10, I think there were 10 of those huge white cubes that are surrounded in metal. And, and so they were going to catch, they were going to fill them all up and they were sitting in the sun. And I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's good or bad to have the water sitting in the sun. Mine, I could put them along the side of that. You would see that as you drive up to the property. So I could put them in the back, but then that's farther to the garden. So I have to figure this out and I need to do it quickly because we're going to get a lot more rain. And there is an overhang, the metal roof overhang, literally, I bet it's not farther than that off of that building. And it's just like, okay, I'm going to have to have a fascia built. And I don't know if the gutter company actually builds that fascia or if that's somebody else or what, but you know, it's just a, a long V metal roof and I've got to have I've got to do that. And I also have to do, as you know, the French drain. So I, I got a lot of water coming down that hill and what's happening in that shop. And I know, I know every guy out there would love to have a big shop, right? <laughs> and you probably don't care that much about what it looks like inside and all that, but I do, I want it to be nice inside. And I did, I did one, um, uh, and, and, and my new helper, uh, who is just, he's just going to come and do jobs here and there because he does work. He does, it helps other people. So, uh, it's not going to be a situation like Eric where he came at eight and he left at four and, and, uh, you know, I paid him for those eight hours and then, uh, you know, I had a whole list, you know, and just do this, do that, do this, let's do this, do this. You know, he would do certain things. We would do certain things together. So it's it's not so much going to be like that because, you know, this this guy has a much larger skill set than Eric, Eric had. So uh, he's probably going to do some work in the house. I'm also going to get some work done on the fireplace. The fireplace... Uh, is very well built, but I think when they put the brick on the the fire that facing it, they were planning on cover that, covering that in wood paneling uh, because that was very popular back in the eighties to have wood paneling everywhere and have dark wood paneling. <laughs> well, uh, that w was taken off by the people who flipped the house, and so what, what's remaining is this: the mortar doesn't match the the bricks are not, you know, there's cracks. It, it's not. So I had a fireplace guy there yesterday and uh, I'm sort of waiting for a price. Uh, but I, he determined, and I don't know if I need to get a second opinion, but he determined that I would be able to raise up the firebox at least three inches, which would be great because this firebox is literally sitting the height of one regular brick off the floor. So you've got to get your face practically down to your ankles <laughs> to look in there. And it would be so much nicer if it was just at least three inches up off the floor, uh, three, three more inches off the floor. But just doing that one thing is going to add a huge amount to the cost because that whole, that whole box has to come out. And right now there's a band, the way it's in there is there's a band uh, that, con that, that screws into the top of the stove and inside that is a metal flex tube. And that flex tube goes up and, and it lives just inside, loosely inside the flue of the chimney. So all that would have to somehow come out, be raised up and, and all, everything, we're talking about refacing it all with stone because that, you know, stacked stone, if you know what that is, no mortar showing, just stacked. But it's, 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 not, it's not like I'm going out to my fence and getting rocks and building it. <laughs> it's not that. It's a, it's a one-inch um, product 
that I don't need to know exactly what the ingredients are, but it's made out of, uh, you know, rock dust and, and I don't know exactly what it is, but it looks, supposedly it is stone like. Anyway, uh, that's not what's on there now. What's on there now are real bricks, real regular size bricks. Uh, and that matches what comes out of the roof. But uh, the room would look so much better. He convinced me that the room would look so much better. And there's other issues with this particular situation with the fireplace, because when they put the second story on, and if you're ever doing this, you might want to think about this, put a second story on, you got to have a downpipe from that toilet, right? Well, they couldn't put it through the wall, so they put it through the living room right beside the fireplace. So it's just covered up with a piece of drywall right now. It was covered up with paneling. And the flippers just brought it down to a piece of drywall with molding. <laughs> it's like, so when you look at this fireplace, you see the depth of the right side go back, but the left side just goes straight that way, the color of the wall. So it's very, it's very disorienting. So I want to try to fix, fix that as best I can. But I, I've determined from asking three or four different people and I can't get the, I can't get that pipe in the wall. So I'm going to have to live with the pipe. Okay. Where are we? Um, Steve is asking about deer fence incoming deer. Did you hear, you saw the video, right? Where I was debating all of this with um, the farm co-op guy, the deer 90, 91 of you are here. Thank you so much for joining this live stream. I am coming to you from Nashville. This is an assisted living and memory care facility in um, Bellevue area. It's actually Pasco, the far west, uh, far west of Nashville. And I'm on the way, way east of Nashville. So, uh, I'm going to be going down and visiting my mother uh, for a little bit. And then I'm going down and doing some target practice this afternoon and uh, stocking up on some groceries. I'm going to stay put for a while. Hopefully I can get my fireplace worked on this week. I told him, I said, no pressure, but just remember, I'm going to be sitting over here cold if the, if the, if the power goes out. So he said he would try to get over there this week. Um, so it's going to look a whole lot better inside. And, you know, when, when you're doing st things like this uh, on your property, uh, you have to say, y you know, he was telling me this yesterday. He said, when you sell a house, I'm not planning on selling, but, you know, if I did, um, people go crazy over the bathrooms in the kitchen. That's, that's where you put your money. And, um, uh, so I'm living, they, they didn't change the cabinets in the kitchen. These are the cabinets from 88. Uh, oak cabinets were very popular back then. But the oak, the, the warmth of the oak cabinets don't go with the manufactured wood, wood floor color. It's very cool. It's like a, a, the coolness of like a walnut or something would, would look really, but the oak does not, it, it clashes. So visually it clashes and it's dark. So I want to try to get some light in the kitchen because I want to shoot videos in my kitchen. I always imagine having this big, beautiful, you know, white countertops and everything to, to make videos and have high ceilings so I can put lights and, you know, do the beautiful cooking videos. But right now that's not going to be an option in that kitchen. So the the inex the least expensive way to to deal with that is to paint the cabinets. So I'm going to paint the cabinets and change the hardware. So that that should help a lot. And bring it out of the '80s and make it feel more um, more modern, I guess. Uh, let's see. So uh, Rebecca is saying that she protects young plants with a fence of T posts, which are movable and livestock panel, but that lo those livestock panels are very, very heavy. Right. I know if Steve Mildegren is on here, when I was out at Steve's house, he had just picked up about four of those. Boy, they looked heavy. Uh, 
I know. So back to the back to the shop. So <laughs> this guy is telling me yesterday that, you know, I could, there's a lot I could do to that shop to make, you know, cause I was watching garden answer. If you, if you, if you watch that channel, you know, she's got a new studio and I'm thinking, Oh my God, I could turn this shop into this great photo studio, you know, filming studio and could do great videos in there and, 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 you know, have grow lights. And I, you know, I don't know what, but it's got huge cracks in the concrete. And one of my earlier um, videos, uh, someone left a comment and said that there was someone in Cookville, which is not too far, that actually comes in and resurfaces all that and makes it look really great. This guy yesterday said you could spend a bunch of money doing that, but it's, it's going to crack anyway, because there's two things to know about concrete. It gets hard and it cracks. So, but I, I just, I just, you know, there's all kinds of buildings that are built on concrete and they can't all just be cracked. Can they? I mean, there's got to be a way to do it without spending a fortune and, and then having it turn right around and crack on you. Nana, so, uh, I asked him about chalk paint. Other people had suggested chalk paint and he goes, no, 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 no. He says that gives it a distressed look and I'm going, okay, well, I'll go look at it. But it, the, those cabinets are probably going to wind up being like just a creamy, you know, if you can imagine whole milk with the cream, that color, but not shiny. I, I don't like shiny things. I like everything to be satiny. Uh, let's see. Sugar Creek Homestead of Tennessee. Plant can transform and look, any look, really. Paint, I'm sorry, paint, it's, I need to brighten my screen or something. Paint can transform. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, where are you located, Sugar Creek? Don't tell me. You're on Sugar Creek. American aloe plants can be used to cover your nine acres of land to avoid deer. What? Well, I'm not going to be plant. I don't need to plant. I have a forest. I'm not I'm hardly going to touch that forest. So my growing area is probably about an acre in question when you, when you get right down to it. You subtract the driveway, the the, the house, and the and the pole barn and, and the shop, and uh, and um, you know when, when as the yard goes down, it dips down, and so uh, there's there's big trees there, and then there's a hill across the way. So if you've seen any of my Instagram posts or anything, there's you know by two or three o'clock in the afternoon, there's of course, that'll be better in the summer, but there's a big hard shadow that hits that really low part at the bottom of the yard. So, yeah, it's interesting, Steve. Um, I remember this was this was sort of one of the legends uh, that we talked about a lot. Uh, my father supervised the. Uh, edition of our house uh, that we grew up in and they, they it, it dropped off in the back and so there was a like a den and then two two rooms um, two bedrooms and a bathroom above and he poured like solid like eight inches of solid concrete walls down there it was just amazing and I don't ever remember there being a crack in that concrete and it wasn't like floor to floor uh, carpet or anything when we grew up it just had a couple of rugs so it was concrete you could see it I don't ever remember ha having big cracks so he must have done a really good job pouring that but now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend the money to to have that jackhammered and all no there's no way that's out of the question but there is moisture getting in the building because of not having the gutters. So I want to accomplish two, two things with the gutters is to rain capture and also keep that moisture from going down the uphill side of that building 
and getting on those it's it's built with six by sixes which is nice but those six by sixes look kind of nasty at the bottom and that there and there are some boards at the top that we found that are that are pretty uh, in, in bad shape too. I mean, I'd love to have him just just write a blank check and say, make this fabulous, you know, <laughs> but I can't do that. Because he said, you're never gonna get your money out of it. Cause it, you know, what people buy are beautiful bathrooms and kitchens. So <laughs> you can't do it. What a year is right, Christy, what a year. Yeah, Beatrice, uh, if you guys remember when I was in Santa Fe, uh, the gal that I introduced you to that was the artist, and she's also the property manager of Linda's house there in Santa Fe, she does that. She was there in Santa Fe to do a two-week commission of repainting someone's uh, kitchen cabinets. And I asked her, you know, um, what it would cost for me to get her to do that in mine, and she is. She said, a lot. <laughs> so I just said, okay, never mind. <laughs> oh. West Tennessee. Sugar Creek is in West Tennessee. Oh, that's sweet. So Sugar Creek has a horse named Sugar. And it's on a creek. And Sugar likes to drink from the creek, so they call it Sugar Creek. I love that. Mm. Okay, so let's see what else has happened. Update on the Wi-Fi. Yeah, we have 91 people on this live stream. If you've just joined, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. I hope to be bringing you inspirational content uh, as often as I can. I made this wild promise in a couple of videos ago that I was going to, I was going to upload uh, Monday through Friday, uh, five days a week. And I'm just going, what were you thinking, Kay? If I do that, that's all I'm doing. And I will never get unpacked. So I can't do that. I will never get this work done. I will never get my uh, garden beds. I want to level them, desperately want to level them. I would love to use uh, rock from the walls, but I asked him about that yesterday. He said, no, <laughs> getting all that rock over there. Uh, it, I don't know. It would cost a fortune. So um, no, Edna. So here's the deal with the, with the internet. I have arranged for internet. It is coming. Why it takes two to four weeks to get me on the schedule. I don't know. In LA, you call up and you say you want cable. I mean, or, you know, internet your package, whatever, they're there the next day. But here it's, you know, small town, it's it's a whole different ball game. But this, evidently, this fiber optic cable was already laid when I bought it, but they hadn't started taking orders. So they started taking orders in January. I just happened to call. They didn't call me. I said, any luck, any movement on the, in, uh, getting service. And she goes, Oh, we're taking orders now. And I said, okay, great. Super. So I got that all set up and, um, but it's going to be two to four more weeks. So I may, you may see me coming from live from here one or two more times. Uh, I'm sorry about the, uh, last week, Daryl has fiber optic cable and, uh, fiber optic internet. And we thought, this is going to be great, but maybe because he was on his computer, I also had my phone on. Maybe it was just too many. Somebody suggested that it was too much, a drain on the on the system. That so I'll I'll just have to remember that when I get the fiber optic, uh, I you know can't have anybody there that's also taking a drain off the internet. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Sugar Creek, yeah, that's for sure. Uh, Jennifer, I'm glad you mentioned that. Jennifer says she's, she is subscribed and has watched every one of my videos. 
That is a fan. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I am I am very grateful. Uh, but she mentioned she's growing Aunt Ruby's green tomatoes. That's the best green tomato I've ever eaten. I love it much more than the, uh, you know, the very popular. I'm going to have to get back in the groove. I've already forgotten names of tomatoes. Um, you know, the uh, the one that everybody grows, the type of this kind of stripy one, the green one. Uh, but what I was going to say before is we were talking about length of season and you don't get tomatoes until August. Well, if you grow short, if you go, if you grow smaller tomatoes, you will. You know, when I first grew tomatoes, I grew the uh, Yoder's German yellow. And these were the biggest tomatoes I've ever grown. And they were like that. And you would be August before I would get the first one, but then they would all come, you know, and then you've got all these tomatoes. And that first year I, I was successful at growing those. I had so many tomatoes and, and I was going to be going on one of my trips because summer is when you, is when you go to see people's gardens because that's when they're growing. And so I would very often in the last few years of late bloomer, I would just get my stuff would just start to ripen and I would be taking off on a trip. So I went down to a doctor's appointment before one of my trips and I had, a, she, and she was telling me at the appointment that she loved homegrown tomatoes. And I said, well, I went home. I, I went back with a box like that big and just left them and gave them to her and her people that worked in her office, <laughs> you know, it's just like you, you do all this work and then you wait and wait and wait and it comes in and you leave. Well, so I won't be doing that this year. You know, as much as I want to keep, go see Tracy in Pennsylvania and uh, Hillary in Texas, and uh, there's a ranch I really want to visit in Texas. I don't know, you know, I'm going to have my own, my own thing to deal with, but guess what? Okay. After I got home uh, I uh, and I posted that video about the plants, somebody said there's a greenhouse company in, also in Cookville. And I looked online and they have all these different greenhouse kits. They're all, they all look like from the website, they all look like they have the, the plastic sheeting. Anyway, I don't really want that. I want something beautiful with glass and, you know, but. That's kind of unrealistic. Uh, so, but I noticed on their website, they have asparagus crowns. Oh my gosh, I've got to get started on that. It takes two to three years to get nice thick spears that you can eat. But I want to go and get a bunch of crowns and I want advice. They had Jersey, three different kinds of Jersey. And I don't know the difference. And I, I want to get asparagus started. I want to get, and they have elderberry and I want to get elderberry started. So those are the two things I'm going to get from them. And probably, I probably won't plant anything else in the yard. Well, no, no, no. I take that back. Trees. They have trees that you can plant now. Nut trees. I want to plant nut trees. Rebecca, you have to come down and help plant, help me plan the uh, orchard. David is here. Uh, are you asking if that's the name? No, that was not the name. The name of the greenhouse was, um, hold on, got it right here. The greenhouse company is called Grower's Solution. Grower's Solution. Uh, yes, be, Denise, and they they have free delivery. I'm thinking about just getting it delivered. Don't bother my dear, don't bother your asparagus. Oh, good. Martha Washington. Well, that's not what, uh, they don't have that one. They may later, but right now it's Jersey something Jersey. Oh, wait, it's right here. Hold on. They've got elderberry. It doesn't say, I know there's different kinds of elderberry, I think. It's funny. Due to this state regulation, this item cannot ship to California. <laughs> oh, Oh my gosh, they've got, oh, they've got flowering quince. I don't know if these are all in. I'm just looking at what they offer. Iris, ornamental trees, lilac, peonies, fruit trees, bushes, hibiscus, magnolia, vegetables, bare root plants, holly. I don't want holly. Um, uh, 
and ornamental stuff. Uh, it looks like they have a lot of stuff. Oh my gosh, I'm going to do that, Daryl. Worm castings can get by the truckload or bagged. Well, I don't have a truck. I know, David, that's the thing. That's the thing. Three years to get a harvest. Mm. I bet Martha Washington is good. What is very popular? Uh, Happy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Tess is here from Sister Marcel's Backyard Garden. Well, I j Tess is talking about the temporary greenhouse, and I just remember Jack. I don't know, Jack, are you still there? <clears throat> Jack Redden in Maryland had a greenhouse. <clears throat> Sorry. And, uh, you know, one storm and it just blew off. <clears throat> so I, I'm sure they're not, those structures, mm -hmm. even with the plastic sheeting, aren't, aren't inexpensive. And I can just imagine one big storm, boom, there's all that money down the drain. I don't know. Oh, a nine-year-old plot of asparagus. Wow. Okay, see you, say Sugar Creek. Five to ten on nut trees. What is the whole sentence, Eric? What are you saying? Yeah, I have to figure out which way the wind blows because there is, you know, where that pile of wood chips is right now. I was over there doing the soil samples. It kind of comes up there and then it goes down to the shop. And so there is kind of a break. And then, of course, you've got the break of all the trees in the back. So I was thinking about putting the greenhouse, literally stepping out of my garage door and just walking on that little curb and then just going right in, have it sit right on the flat part. I, I'll have to make it flatter, but put it right there. That's what I was thinking. David, I understand that you can get treated wood now. Well, of course, if you're just walking on it, I guess it doesn't matter. I think they make treated wood now that it's not toxic to your plants. Aha, uh -huh. Devils says she sees people modify the install on the greenhouse build, adding wood structure. Wait, Sager is saying it was Luther Burbank from California who really changed gardening techs. Techs, T E C S. And I'm real good on the way. Yeah, I know. I think December is a real good time to plant trees here. I miss that. You know, I haven't hardly seen any squirrels, and I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but squirrels will devastate my figs. You know that. Or they, they devastated my pineapple guavas. I'd like to have a greenhouse big enough to grow my tropical plants in there. But then you've also got to heat it. Did I miss anybody? Gina is here. Say hi to Gina from North Carolina. Oh, that's good. Now, the growing Grower Solutions, I believe, is in Cookville, Denise. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so those are just some of the, uh, the things that I'm doing. I'm going to be uh, very busy. Maybe I'll be shooting tomorrow. I'm not exactly sure. I've got so much to do, but I was encouraged by be getting just one little bit of mess put away. Thank you so much for joining this live stream. Um, I, I really appreciate, appreciate you hitting the like button on your way out. Um, I may be coming to you again once or twice from my mother's uh, assisted living facility here because they have good internet and uh, until I get my own, which hopefully won't be that long because it is ordered. And uh, it seems like there was so much else I was going to talk about. What else? Um, my lights. Oh, yes, my lights. Well, I'm going to do a video showing you my lights and talking about them. But if you if you want to support a company, a, you, a small family business that makes grow lights, go to grow it, uh, growitled.com. They're in Auburn. I believe it's Auburn, California. It's up near Sacramento. Uh, I talked to James, ask for James. He customized the light for me. I wanted the cords a certain length and I wanted the cords white instead of black. I hate seeing that big black cord coming down from the ceiling. Um, and so uh, he customized that for me. And you know, now that I have them, I think I'd rather just set up a whole grow station out in the shop or something. Well, it's too cold out there. Let's see. Maybe in the garage. It doesn't freeze in the garage. So um, I have the see. I have a lot to figure out. Um, but right now, all my plants are in the house, staying nice and snugly warm. So listen, everybody, stay safe, stay well, stay positive. Hopefully, I can bring you inspiration. If you're a late bloomer and you're just finding my channel for the first time, I hope you subscribe, tell your friends, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. So God bless, and thanks for tuning in, and have a great week.